Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how you can create an interactive Excel pivot table chart. Now, there's several ways that we can add a pivot table chart to a pivot table. It's important to understand that you must have a pivot table attached to the chart. Any changes you make in your pivot table are reflected in your pivot table chart. So I could either choose to have a pivot table chart created at the same time as when I create my pivot table, or if I already have a pivot table, I can add a pivot table chart. So if I select one cell inside the pivot table, on pivot table tools, I could come over here in options and say create a pivot table chart. Also, if I choose in Excel 2007, I could come over here to the Insert tab on the ribbon and just begin to build my chart the same way I would with any data set. So what I want to do is come over here on Pivot Table Tools, Options, and select Pivot Table Chart. I begin by selecting the type of chart. I'm going to stay with a column chart. Now, a lot of things happen over here. Notice that in addition to what I had, the pivot table and the pivot table field list, here's my chart. And the new default setting for pivot table charts in Excel, beginning in Excel 2007, is that they are created on the same worksheet as your pivot table. And we also get this brand new, beginning in Excel 2007, pivot chart filter pane. Now, I'm going to come back to this later on in the lesson, so I'm going to close that down. So here we have our pivot table, we have our pivot table field list, the drop zones, and the chart. Notice that any changes that I make to the pivot table are reflected in the chart. Any changes that I make in the chart are reflected in the pivot table. So first off, as I look over here, I realize that I have three complete years and one partial year. I really don't want to have that partial year over here. So I could come over here in the years in my pivot table field list and filter that out. In this case, rather than having all of the possibilities, I only want to have the three complete years. Click OK. So you see the pivot table report is updated and the chart is updated at the same time. And with any embedded chart, I can change the dimensions. I can also choose to move it around. And as you will see, we can also move it on to its own worksheet. One way to do that is when you click on the pivot table chart, notice that you get pivot table chart tools for designing your pivot table, laying out your pivot table, formatting your pivot table, and analyzing your pivot table. Back here on pivot chart tools for design, I could choose to move my uh, pivot table chart on to its own worksheet location. So I could create a new worksheet that has only the chart on it. Let's do it. Let's click OK. All right, now I still have my pivot table field list. For right now, what I want to do is I want to remove the pivot table field list and I want to bring up that pivot table filter chart that I deleted about a minute ago. So in this case, I'm going to delete the pivot table field list. And if I come over here to pivot table tools, analyze, what I can do is I can bring back the pivot table filter and I can move that anywhere I want. If I want to have the field list, I can bring it back there. So the filters that we do on our pivot table report, we can filter the report and the chart together. Remember the chart and the pivot table report are intertwined. Any changes that you make to the layout, any changes that you make in the filtering on the pivot table report are reflected in the chart. Any changes that you make in the chart are reflected in the pivot table. All right, let's take a look over here and see how we can make this an interactive chart. Now, I'm not going to worry about the design changes on the pivot table for right now. Let's just say that I'm in a meeting. And what I want to do is I want to concentrate on two specific quarters. I want to concentrate on the third quarter and the fourth quarter. So what I would do over here on the uh, report filter is I would just deselect all and then select the quarters that I'm interested in looking at. And there you go. So now I'm isolating in on quarter three, quarter four. During the discussion, if I wanted to change that, that would be easy enough to do. I could change it to quarters one and two. 
click OK. So you see how it becomes an interactive chart. It's really very simple. I could also make some changes to the years. Rather than looking at the last three years, what if I wanted to look at just the completed 2009 and 2010 years? Click OK. So you see I have that interactive chart. It's really, really simple to make those changes to it. And again, remember that I have my pivot chart tools up here. So let's come back here and make some changes on each of the four um, different tabs on the uh, contextual ribbon. First off, let's change the style. Remember, I'm going to be projecting this on a screen during a meeting, so I want to have a better looking style in here. So I did that on the Pivot Chart Tools Design tab. If I come over here onto the Layout tab, I hate grid lines on my charts, and I hate the default placement of the legends. So what I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to select the area that I want to format. In this case I'm selecting the grid lines. So now that they're selected I'll delete them and now over here for the legend what I want to do is I always prefer to show my legend down here at the bottom. All right, so we've made some changes on the design and on the layout. Now let's come over here onto the format. You see, as we move from left to right, we get um, uh, choices that move us from the grand view on the design tab and moving increasingly down to the local level. In this case, what I want to do is I want to change the formatting of the shapes for the series. I would like to have them pop. So I'm going to choose one of these designs. I'll change this design as well. And remember, I can always right mouse click if I want to format the background. So over here for the background of my chart, rather than having an automatic, which is kind of a flat background, let's just say that I prefer a gradient fill. What I could do is I could decide which colors I want to have. Oh, that's a lot better. All right, that's going to look nice projected. So now we've made some changes to the format of our chart. And when we come back here to analyze, what I can do is if I need to bring up the field list, I can bring that up. So the field list and the chart filter work hand in hand. Remember how I was filtering by quarter, I was filtering by year. I could do the same thing down here in the pivot table field list. I have my filters over here. So if all at once I want to bring back all filters, it really doesn't matter where we make the change in the pivot table field list or up here in the new pivot chart filter pane. We get the same uh, options to make those changes. All right, now what I want to do is I want to move this back over here on to the same worksheet as the original data. So in this case, I'm going to say move the chart and where I want to move it to is I want to move it as an object inside the raw data worksheet. Click OK and there you go. Now I can get rid of the filter and now I have my pivot table as well as the pivot table chart. Remember, any changes that you make in the chart are reflected in the pivot table report. Any changes that you make in the pivot table report are reflected in the chart. So there you've learned how to create interactive pivot table charts. It's interesting to note that the reason I chose this lesson is I was looking on my website. I was looking at my index of the free Excel uh, videos that I offer and I noticed that I have a lot of report or a lot of videos on pivot tables but I was lacking one on a pivot table chart. So after I publish this I'll come back and I'll update my index and you can go back and click on the hyperlinks there to find any of my free Excel training videos or use my 50 best tips for website uh, for Excel or my new uh, longer length videos that I offer on WebEx. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.